Hello, this is Professor Kitch, and welcome to this webcast on section 10.9 covering secondary compression settlement. The objectives for this section are short and sweet. You should be able to compare and contrast secondary compression with primary consolidation, and you should be able to compute secondary compression settlement. As we have learned, primary consolidation is caused by a change in the effective stress in the soil. Some load is applied to the soil, and initially this creates an excess pore pressure. Over time, that excess pore pressure dissipates. The effective stress increases, transferring load to the soil skeleton. In response, the soil skeleton compresses and the soil consolidates. The magnitude of the primary consolidation is a function of the magnitude of the change in effective stress and the soil compressibility properties. Secondary compression is initiated by the disruption of the soil caused during primary consolidation but it occurs without any change in effective stress in contrast to primary consolidation. The magnitude of secondary compression settlement delta sub s is a function of time and the secondary compression index c sub alpha. It's generally much smaller than primary consolidation settlement. It's a type of creep behavior and the fundamental mechanisms are not well understood. A good way to think of secondary compression is as a process in response to primary consolidation. When the soil is in its initial state, before we build anything on the ground, before it's disturbed by any loading, it has a stable structure that has developed over hundreds of thousands or millions of years. When we build something on the soil and disturb it, it first consolidates to carry the additional effective stress. But even after the excess pore pressure has dissipated and the soil skeleton has taken on the additional effective stress, the soil is still not happy. It's still upset by the way we disturbed it during primary consolidation. It wants to subtly rearrange the solid particles to reach a more stable configuration, a sort of entropy process to a lower energy state. This is a long-term creep process. It's initiated by the initial disturbance to the soil skeleton due to primary consolidation, but it's a separate process. The parameter we use to characterize the amount of secondary compression a soil will experience is called the secondary compression index C sub alpha. C sub alpha is defined as the change in void ratio versus the change in log of time. There is also a strain formulation which is called the secondary compression ratio and is equal to C sub alpha over 1 plus E naught or the change in vertical strain versus the change in log of time. There's good empirical evidence that C sub alpha is related to C sub C. Research has shown that the ratio of C sub alpha over C sub C is constant for a given soil. Table 10.5 provides some guidance on estimating C sub alpha given C sub C. We can also measure C sub alpha during a consolidation test. Computing secondary compression settlement is very simple. The governing equation has the same form as our primary consolidation equation except that C sub alpha replaces C sub C and the log of time replaces the log of effective stress. In this equation, T is the time after the start of primary consolidation and T sub P is the time required to complete primary consolidation. We'll learn how to calculate T sub P in the next chapter in the course. For now, it will be given to you. It's easiest to illustrate this calculation with an example. So let's do example 1010 from your text. In this example, we're given a 10 meter thick clay layer with C sub alpha over 1 plus E naught of 0.018 and the time of primary consolidation is 40 years. The question our client is asking is how much settlement will occur over the next 30 years? This is exactly the question being asked about the Kansai airport. It's clear that much of the settlement now occurring is due to secondary compression which wasn't considered during the original design. However, the magnitude of consolidation is so large that the secondary compression has become significant. For our problem, we simply compute secondary compression settlement D sub S as C sub alpha over 1 plus E naught, 0.018, times the soil thickness, which I've converted to 10,000 millimeters, times the log of 70 years divided by 40 years. Be sure to put the total time since the start of primary consolidation in the numerator, not just the time since the end of primary consolidation. Punch this into your calculator and you'll come up with 40 millimeters of secondary compression settlement. As you can see, this is a really simple calculation. 
So let's summarize. Secondary compression is a creep phenomenon. It's initiated by primary consolidation, but it's a separate process that occurs without any change in effective stress. We can estimate C sub alpha from C sub C using the data in Table 10.5. Secondary compression settlement is almost always much less than primary consolidation settlement, but it can be significant when primary consolidation is large. Is it, 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 is it,